I'm Brett Fry. Um, Linda and Karen are also up here. Um, just utilizing Google Drive. Um, just to kind of give you some background here. Um, let's see if I get that. There we go. Um, about a year ago, we started this idea of trying to implement, you know, really a way to kind of save costs as far as the department. Special education, we kill a lot of trees, not intentionally, but it just kind of seems to be a, the nature of the beast. And one of the things that we were looking at is how can we save costs, how can we increase communication and efficiency, and this is where Google Drive came into. I actually came across it on YouTube. I saw a teacher out in Canada, Ohio. He had a, did something for a graduate class, and I sent him a message, and he actually gave me kind of like a foundation of what Google could be utilized and how it could be utilized. So, you know, it saves supplies. Uh, teachers can access it at any time. That's the beautiful part about it. You know, information is universally accessible across various platforms. So if you're a Chromebook school, you can uh, access it from Chrome. Um, if you use iOS devices like iPads, if you use an Android device, you can use it, you know, really virtually anywhere. Since it is web-based, you don't have to worry about lugging a laptop around. It can be utilized with, you know, the various platforms that are offered out there. And I wanted to get a picture of Sue Dustman's one of our teachers. She always carries about three large binders and a laptop, um, but there's no stacks of paper to carry home. So that's the nice, really the nice part about it. So um, one of the big things that I had a question of is how can Google be used and how is it compliant? Well, the nice part about using Google Docs as far as uh, the Google Drive through the enterprise account, which I think most school districts have the accessibility of getting you know, attached to, is it's FERPA compliant and it's COPA compliant. So meaning, for most of us, most of our kids are over the age of 13, but we don't have to worry about having parents sign off on that. So it does meet those two, you know, privacy laws that is something I think a lot of school districts as far as wanting to make sure that we're uh, compliant and not putting ourselves out for, you know, litigation and whatnot. So the old way of collecting data, for us, we would use um, a Word document that Word document, we can email to our teachers. Teachers would have to download the document. They'd have to fill it in. They'd have to save it. They'd have to email it back to me. Um, progress monitoring, kind of the same way. We would have a drive, save the documentation somewhere else. End of the quarter, teacher would pull that information, add it to the PM, send it home to the parents. So it was very difficult as far as to get the information sent out. But it's one of the things that, you know, one of the hurdles we ran into. And when you send emails out, oftentimes teachers don't respond to them, so we'd have to send a reminder email out. Um, then we'd also get the issue of the document wouldn't get saved properly and only half the information was there. So for us, it was one of those things where we wanted to take a look at, you know, how can we make this better and efficient. So we <coughs> run into unorganized documents, pages and pages of documentation that is scattered through email, through Word documents that are saved on, um, you know, whatever hard drive it is on a computer, whatever it may be, it was just unorganized, it took time to organize, and ultimately, we wanted to come up with a plan of how we can be more efficient as a school and as a department. I think the other problem, too, was that sometimes people didn't even want to use the email version, so they would print it, do the hard copy, try to get that back, so we had some issues with that, so you're right, you had stuff different places yeah. that you were trying to figure out where everything was that you needed to actually write the IP. We also had the teacher would like to just change the student's name and send out the same form. Every year. Every year. <laughs> so this also prevents some of those things because, you know, teachers want convenience and, and that's one of the things that we try to provide for them, but we also want relevant documentation to ensure that we're painting, painting a, a proper picture of the child at the IEP meeting. So um, now you have a plan. Now everything's digitized. Teachers can share folders with teachers. So I can share folders with teachers within my department. Teachers can share folders with administrators. As an administrator, Linda wants to come into an IEP meeting to be able to see what's the progress monitoring on the student? What contacts have been made to the parents? What, what do we have in place? What do the surveys say? She can see that as Linda would be our main seed and be able to kind of see in our little infrastructure here into every teacher's folder to determine if they're making the contacts and if the information has been shared properly and if it's reflected into the IEP. And the data is accessible by all. Like I said, it can be accessible from at home, it can be accessible from here. If I want to pull my phone up, I can, I can pull up that information relatively easy, which is the nice part about it. So, with this place, uh, faster, seamless uh, for teachers to share data, 
and it's easy for teachers to manage a portfolio. Initially, it's a little bit of work, but each student and each case manager will have a list of, of students, and then in that folder will be, uh, in their case management folder, will be each one of their teach or each one of their students, where they can have their surveys, parent contacts, progress monitoring information, which organizes the teacher and gives us a, really a larger scale of you know, being able to be compliant and monitor each other without having to ask teachers to provide notebooks, binders, and everything else when we're trying to look through information to make sure that we're being compliant. So, the details. This is our old way. This is our old um, Word document. Teachers would have a hard time filling in the information. Boxes would get skewed. Comments were really limited. Accommodations, you know, you have about, you know, four teachers sending you all the accommodations they use, and really what would happen would be a teacher would spend, and one of our newer teachers spent, she said uh, she wrote four of these teacher surveys, it took her almost a half day, almost to half to three quarters of a day to do it. After we put it into a Google Doc, literally it took her about ten minutes to be able to get that information and be able to analyze the information. Because if we have data, we're not using that data to drive the IEP, it's just information that's kind of being you know, put out there. So the new document looks like this. Um, instead of sending an email with a Word document, it comes with this, you know, really cool link. You fill out your information. You identify, you know, for us, we're looking for, you know, um, both functional and academic behavioral needs. So teachers are able to fill that out. And then what happens is they submit it. That's it. There's no more saving. There's no more nothing, anything else. There's nothing too, you know, elaborate that they have to do. It's secure, it's safe, and it's quick, which is great for teachers and it's great for my department because what happens is these results get saved into the, the actual survey, but it also gets saved onto a spreadsheet to where it's accessible to them anywhere, anytime, and they can use that information to actually write their IEPs. So you can see how Google actually analyzes your documentation. Here's a student, organizational habits, um, was acceptable by 75% of his teachers 25% found that it was a strength of his. So now Google analyzes and organizes your information. It shares charts and graphs when parents are reviewing them with the IEPs. The information is safe and secure. And the nice part is, if you want to share this information to a parent, you don't necessarily have to print it out. If you have an email address, you can share that documentation with them via email, um, as well as you can print it out and provide it to them at the IEP meeting. So it makes things a lot more efficient. And if we look at it as Keystone, or we look at Common Core and everything else, we want to look at the standards and we want to look at the data. And this is what it's providing us as data. We can make data-driven IEPs and make this a much more efficient process for our students, our teachers, and our parents. So right here, it's a little grainy, but you can actually see how we embed that information into our IEPs. Now, our IEP writer doesn't allow us to take those beautiful pictures and then clip them into the IEP, but what we do is, we actually create kind of a, um, you know, kind of a boilerplate, if you want to say here, and we can actually go down and look at all the different behavioral things. The top part here is organization and uh, homework completion, effort, test performance. Then we have the behavior component of it: is the student able to manage themselves in the in the classroom as far as behaviorally? And then the cool part is we get tests and homework, or class and average, or sorry, homework and class averages as well as test averages. Now. If I'm looking at this and I see that a student doesn't complete their homework, and I see that they're struggling with their homework in uh, classroom average and they're struggling on tests, that's a point that I can bring up to a parent and just say, hey, listen, we're having an issue here as far as with homework completion with Johnny or Susie. Let's sit down, let's talk about a plan, put an accommodation in, or come up with a plan that we can provide to support that student, you know, if they're struggling in English <coughs> class or struggling in science. That gives us the ability to kind of dive into the root cause of what the issue is for that student, rather than having paragraphs upon paragraphs of information that really, it looks great, but are you really using that data to drive the instruction of the student? This allows us to do this. Um, we also give a place where the teachers can provide comments. The teachers are able to provide the comments and then actually give us um, you know, a snapshot of how they're doing in their classes. So we also have that component of it as well. I think, and what we used to do was the teacher would write like a paragraph for each class and answer those same questions for each class. So it was really time consuming for our case managers to even put that information in the IEP. 
then this way it's very nice because that's all summarized for you. And then the only individualized thing we need to put in there is that teacher's comment. So it's our teachers are finding already. Yeah. It's, it's making writing that IEP easier for them and less time consuming. A lot of our teachers at first, <coughs> what I will say is this has kind of been a grassroots thing where about three or four of us decide. Karen was one of them myself. Uh, we have one or two other teachers who are willing to kind of take this on. A lot of resistance. We have um, with our ES staff. We have about 21 teachers in the building, 17 of which uh, in my in, in the LS department who will be utilizing this next year. We felt as though we wanted to try to grow this to gain confidence from people. We didn't want to take this and just put this out there and say, "All 17 teachers, you're going to do this." We wanted to work through some of the technical issues to identify some of those things, and then when you know 16, 17 comes around. We want to embed this, you know, across the board with all of our teachers. Um, so it's something that it takes time to implement, but when you do it and you do it properly, I think it's going to be something, at least for us, it's going to make our school much more efficient when it comes to writing. We have, we have 400 kids in our building, so to be able to get through that much debt, 400 special aid kids, sorry, it's going to make it much more um, you know, much more efficient and a lot easier to go through that data. All right, identifying accommodations. This is another thing that allows us, this is great about Google. We put out probably like a whole string of accommodations that teachers provide. Once again, like Linda said, we would just keep these little paragraphs here and really see, you know, we would put them into the paragraph. John or Susie uses extended time, guided notes, et cetera, et cetera. But what Google does is it actually breaks it down and it gives you percentages of what teachers are using, what accommodations, and then from there, you can identify the accommodations that are working successfully with your students. So when you list that out on an IEP, you can say that Johnny or Susie are using, you know, guided notes. Extended time works well with them. Um, peer tutoring is another accommodation that works well. So what it does is it actually gives you the data that's being used for this child and what's being used successfully, and then you can actually implement that into the IEP. This is our old technical survey. This is the survey that oftentimes we would receive, receive over and over again from our technical teachers. Um, employability skills, a lot of those things that I know that, you know, at least at your half-day programs or your full-day programs are looking for. Um, this is something that we try to address with this. And when we utilize the Google form, it, once again, it created, you know, kind of a, it gave us the information that we need to be able to provide our parents and, you know, the functional and the transitional sections for that. So this was our old way. A lot of times we would get like a, an older form that was like one or two generations old, with, didn't have the correct information. Um, it, and it, what it did was it created a challenge for us because we would try to really try to fit a square peg through a round hole, and it just didn't work. So using the Google form allowed us to basically have one form, and it forced all the teachers to use that form for when they're trying when they're providing us the information. So once again. Same form, different format, we can update it, we can control it. Um, obviously, you know, technical area, teacher's name, grade, and then these are the accommodations that's sent out to them. They get this in an email link, they click it, they fill it out. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where we're gaining, you know, that, that teacher's confidence because really it's probably taking a teacher maybe 10 minutes of time where using the Word document it could take them quite a bit more time to save it to make sure that it's attached properly. Plus, then they have to worry about, who am I sending this to? I have 17 teachers in the building. It's very often that I would get Billy's, you know, I would get Matt's kid, Matt's kid would get sent to Jeremy, and, you know, we're trying to prevent that. That way it goes to the drive and it gets saved to the drive. And I can show that to you here in a little bit. Um, analyze employability data. You know, what instructional strategies, once again, our technical teachers provide that. You know, it's a student cooperative, works with peers. That data we can utilize so that way if we go into an IEP meeting and we're trying to identify uh, employability data, getting a kid ready for co-op or going out, we can say to them, listen, you're, you know, you're really struggling working with peers. It's probably a good idea that you really work on that. So it, it starts a conversation between the IEP team and the student and the parent to try to get them prepared for co-op prepared for you know the workforce which is ultimately our goal um, you know working within the CTC 
Um, here's as far as employability data with competencies. Um, this is from one of our IT teachers. We basically ask them to write a paragraph as far as what they're seeing and then also provide us with the competencies they've completed. So as they go down their task list, they have the ability to attach it or they can actually cut and paste the completed task list into, the I, into this form and then what we're able to do is embed that into the IEP. So we can go over and say, you know, enable SSH and basically go over all this information with them. At our IEPs, we actually have our technical teacher there talking about you know, what, the, what the student's done in their class. So when this is up, that teacher can go down through that list and provide a pretty quick summary of how things are going, but then it also gives a parent the idea of what they're doing in that class. What certifications have they worked on? What will they be working on? And then we embed that data directly into our IEP, just like we have here. So, you know, we have the characteristics, you know, personnel characteristics, learning comprehension, work habits, and then teacher comments. And then we also, for our seniors, we also do, you know, recommendations, you know, um, do we recommend the student going on to, um, you know, uh, would they recommend them for full-time employment, what, what concerns they may have, what things do they need to work on. So we do provide our teachers with that ability. But it, really what it's done is it's simplified it and it's made it much more clear for our parents and our students of what they're doing and the expectations within their programs. So we also have the ability to, you know, if you have a really hard time getting a hold of parents, um, you can do it by phone, you can email them a copy of this parent survey and they can complete it themselves and send it to you. Students as well, I will sit down with my students and have them complete this. And the nice part about it is Google Drive actually houses all the data for me in one folder for one student. So I have 30 kids on my caseload or 28 on my caseload. Every one of those students has a case management file and all their data is saved into each one of those case management files. So what it does is I can go to that student at any given time in any given place and pull that information and be able to write an IEP realistically or provide a parent data about a student um, instantaneously. Instead of having to run back to my office, go through forms, see, I can see relatively quickly how well the student's doing with its progress monitoring, its um, teacher surveys, parent surveys, etc. Et um, the, the also, the other nice thing about it is progress monitoring made easy. I know that some of us, you know, we use um, IP Tracker through Performance Plus. I know some organizations use IP Writer across the state. One of the big problems with some of these systems is the amount of time that it takes to actually upload progress monitoring data to the document. Um, some programs will allow you to cut and paste a picture of a graph, which is great, and that's where Google really kind of comes into play. You can build a chart and graph relatively quickly. You can have your parent contacts. You can have the student's uh, chart and graph information uh, for each one of their you know, academic and technical goals, and all of it kind of builds itself as it goes. You can share the information with teachers, administrators, you can share it with parents, you can share it with students to show how well they're doing in their classes. Um, for us, you know, when I would work on our IEP tracker, which is our IEP writer, um, it probably would take, I don't know, a good 20, 25 minutes to get through one student's progress monitoring for, you know, all their academic and technical goals. Probably about five minutes with Google. It's very quick, and once you have it set up, you're just basically inputting the numbers and the data into that chart and graph, and it builds it for you instantaneously. So, um, you know, what do teachers think of Google Forms? This is one of the big things as far as what we run into. You know, do you feel like special education teachers uh, on Google saves you time? 72% of the teachers do feel like that. So, you know, we have 47 respondents about 100 and some teachers. So to have that many teachers respond in a positive manner is a very good thing. So it's showing that it's been a positive thing as far as being able to implement for our students and our teachers. Um, keep on press up here. Uh, do you feel like the special, ed uh, special education survey on Google is easier to understand? 77% of the teachers say yes. So from being them, being able to comprehend and do what they need to do, 77% of them say yes. And this was a very small start and it's grown. I think once we provide teachers with more training and 
a better understanding of this, I wouldn't be surprised if this number grows and, and continues to grow. Do you, prefer, uh, do you prefer using Google Form to complete the teacher survey? 81% of our teachers say yes. So, um, you know, working at your tech for eight years, to see this many people kind of jump in and say, hey, we really like this, that's a great thing because I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, definitely was a slow start, but it's something that I think as we progress on with it, and it's something that any school I think can implement with fidelity and, and really kind of take part in that growth um, to, to get, gain information about their students. So here are, some, here are some of the comments from some of our teachers. Some of them love it. Some of them, the biggest concern that they had is they want a copy of it sent to them. Um, that was one of the biggest things that came out of our survey. And working with, with Google and trying to you know, work with some of their people, um, basically as we create our enterprise account, the next phase of this would be every teacher would have a ytech.edu Google account. <laughs> If they sign into that email account, it will provide them with a copy of it, but we just haven't gotten there yet. Um, our, I guess our password and username software that we use isn't necessarily working well with Google at this point, so it, it's not something that we wanted to throw at IT and say, hey, can you fix this right now, especially when they're dealing with PIMS and our student management system and everything else. I think it's more something that we'll work on during the summer to try to implement so that way. I think it is important that teachers do get their results back, so if they go to an IEP meeting, they can actually see what they provided their, provided their teachers. So that, that was the one biggest complaint, and I think if we can address that, that would definitely encourage some, some, uh, some more people you know, wanting to buy into this. <coughs> so what's next for YCST? Well, um, our goal is to integrate Google services for IEP development for monitoring data, building wide. Um, like I said, Linda has the ability to view progress monitoring data, teacher surveys, and parent <coughs> contacts. Uh, development of an internal Google site for the special education department, so more or less like an intranet. And then, you know, why does YCST use Google? Well, using Google will save you time and resources, and I think that's the biggest thing that we found. Um, I know that we have some time here. I wanted to show you our, our website, answer some questions for you, and then also, you know, maybe address, you know, I, I have no issue with sharing anything that we have with anybody. Uh, I didn't do paper because one thing I wanted to say, I wanted to save paper and save resources, so I didn't do the paper. But if you provide me with an email, I will gladly share you know, our documents with you, and I can show you some of our documents that we utilize as far as for, for our school. So, um, any questions? How does this accommodate the tracking that's required by the federal government of who reviews the IEP? then also how about the sign off for the IEP? Well, this is really the tool that we collect the data with. Um, still, you know, our compliance monitoring still requires a teacher to turn in an IEP prior to the IEP to have one of us review it. Um, we just want to make sure this provides our teachers with a tool that really across the board that everyone can use. It provides consistency. I think any time in education, if you're consistent, that it will allow you to be more successful than if, you know, um, I have a way of doing it, Karen has a way of doing it, Scott has a way of doing it. There's a lot of inconsistencies there. So if you can actually streamline it and create a process where it is organized, I think that helps give us that ability. Um, as far as for the compliance piece, what that's going to give Linda the ability to do is to go in and see the parent contacts. And I can show that to you. I'll pull that up here, but show the parent contacts show the charts and graphs as they're being created because we do mail them out quarterly. And then also, you know, it gives us the ability to house all of our information on one, you know, one cloud-based system where it's accessible for all the teachers and administrators within the building. All right, I can show you our intranet and then show you kind of that case management also. That's why I brought my laptop in, so. I apologize for it. And then there's our contact information. So, yeah, they just went away. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's because I clicked on the link.
All right, so next year what we're hoping for is to, this would be our department internet, and what we want to do is provide our teachers with, you know, updates, information as far as like our, our school vision, you know, for our department and whatnot. We'll put our department meeting updates, so any information that's passed down along from, um, Linda has from advisory council, which is our um, monthly IU meetings as far as what they're passing down, we'll put that up there, plus our department meeting agendas and whatnot. Um, progress monitoring updates as far as about dates, Act 80, um, and then also, probably our biggest thing is that we're wanting to do is put our testing accommodations, that way, you know, if we have keystone testing, uh, not detesting things like that. This is on a secure website to where basically that information is accessible to you know pretty much anybody who has a passport into this. So you know if we need to know what accommodations for what students, it's very accessible to our you know administrators and, and support staff that need that information. Um, probably the where this started from was right here um, was our parent surveys and technical teacher and student surveys. I didn't create the surveys. Linda and Karen created them. I just put them onto a Google form. And really, that's what really started this trend as far as what we've been doing. But um, if we go to my drive here, this will just give you an idea. So here's our special education department. So Linda, as the supervisor, will have access to every one of the teacher's folders. From there, the teachers will have a folder with case management information in. This is my case manager folder. And what I can do is I can go to, I'll just pick a student, Jason, and from there is his progress monitoring. Um, we have his technical, his academic survey, and parent contacts and whatnot. So if I went down to, when I'm writing my IEP, what happens here is this. I want to um, provide <laughs> this is where I, I would write my IP from. This is uh, as far as the teachers the information. You can see here that the teachers all provided me um, their survey. So it creates a spreadsheet for you. And you know these are all the behavioral components of it. Homework completion, effort, test performance, self-advocacy, homework completion, uh, managing frustration, all the behavioral components of it. And then when we get to teacher comments, and then accommodations. What I like about this is when I'm writing an IEP, this is what I'm using because I'm creating my own little charts and graphs. But if I want to show a summary of how the student's doing, what I go to here is a really useful <coughs> show summary of responses. Summary of responses here actually gives me charts and graphs of how the student is doing. When I go into an IEP meeting, the reality is this, if I'm showing, sorry I have to say, um, if I'm showing a parent a paragraph, how much of that are they going to read? A parent's going to come in for 45 minutes. I want to present them with data. I can say that Jason is struggling with organizational habits. I can tell you that Jason is struggling with, with completing homework. <laughs> These are areas that we need to really work on to make sure that we're improving. So at the IEP meeting, I have data now to really drive that IEP. And I also have a nice chart to be able to show where the student is struggling with and what, what we need to do to improve. So for me, I believe that it makes our IEP meetings much more efficient, and it makes them much more useful because now parents are actually seeing what we're talking about. I don't know why a pretty chart and graph does it for people, but a lot of times it does. It really, it really does. You know. So. You know, well, you can even look, I mean, it's, it's nice too because what you're seeing there is that, you know, not just the percentages, but three of the teachers said right. that that's an area that needs to be pursued. So, you know, as you go down, you can see, you know, the, the student, um, you know, one area struggle with test performance. You know, here we have a student with an attendance issue. So all these things pop up and then what it allows you to do is when you go into the meeting, you can present the data to the parent and just say, okay, we need to put in an intervention for this child, or, you know, Jason's not going to graduate his senior year because his attendance is down, because his attendance is down, he's not doing his homework, and because he's not doing his homework, his test grades aren't doing very well. And then it really kind of starts allowing you to target some of the behaviors and find what the root causes of the issues. So, for me, 
I feel as though it makes me more efficient and it makes me a better case manager and a better special education teacher. And I think ultimately that's what we want to do because most of us in this room probably not only have the case management duties, but a teaching load duty or whatever else we have on top of us. Um, and I think what this allows us to do is it organizes the information for us and it makes us much more efficient as, as educators. And that's the ultimate goal is to be efficient and to be able to provide our students with the, you know, with faith. Uh, you know, how can we provide this child with an appropriate education? So, you know, what, what interventions can we provide them? And I think that's what, you know, the Google Docs allows us to do. Uh, Karen, I, you've used it as well. I don't know if you wanted to add anything as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I really liked it when Brett showed it to me because I've been writing IPs since the TRS 80 days. <laughs> so this is, you know, I, I thought this was really good. And Mr. Fry is really, really good at this. You know, obviously he can do this. I am not so much, and uh, and he wouldn't write down instructions for me. So one time I asked him, "Please, Brad, write me instructions." No, you can do this. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So so I have been using this all year when I've been doing IPs. The only glitch that I ran into, and I still don't know what I did, um, and it was my own fault, obviously, because I didn't do something right was I sent out surveys for two different kids that I was writing IEPs for. And somehow on the drive, they crossed. So I got like on one of those, like the spreadsheet that he showed and on the, on the graphs, I got like eight teachers responses, but for two different kids. So I sort of had to go back and see which responses <laughs> were for which kids and do my own percentages and stuff. But that's really the only glitch that I found, and I'm sure it was my fault that that happened like that, and I didn't want to you know, send them out to the teachers again and said, sorry, I screwed up, do it again. So, uh, but um, I think it's great. It presents the data in the IEP just so much more succinctly. Um, I just wish somehow, and our IEP program can't do it, you can't take you know, the nice charts and graphs and embed them right in the IEP. You know, that it just doesn't do that for you. I don't know if any other programs would do that or not. But um, I, and it, if I can do it, you know, doing this as long as I have, I think anybody could do it. And I thought it was really good that we just started with three or four of us this year to see and try to work out some of the bugs before the rest of our department takes it on, too. We're, we're fortunate that we can have one teacher do it who's known for going in and wrecking collaborative documents. <laughs> He's retiring this year, from my understanding. So, um, <laughs> so it, it has happened in the past, but the reason you can't really do that on the yeah. Now at this point, yeah. The reason why you know, reason why we built this website is is because of this right here. This, um, you know, our local IU has something called a dashboard, which is a word document, and then you have to go in. This website is accessible to our teachers. At any bit, at any given point, where they can actually go in and actually make copies of these documents, and you know, if I what ha was happening was a teacher would have to make a copy of it, and if they didn't make a copy of it, what would happen would be is that document would end up um, just saving to the original copy. So by doing this, when I click on this, what happens here is it says make a copy of a parent survey. Now it'll force a copy of a parent survey into my Google Drive, so it won't touch anybody else, no other case manager's drive, it'll go into Brett Fry's drive. And then what I do is I add my information, then I save it. Mm -hmm. So that way, when it goes onto my main drive, then I know what student's folder to put that into. So that was probably our biggest issue when we initially launched it, but it's like anything else, you learn and you kind of grow with it. I'm excited about it because I think that um, I think it can improve any department at any grade level. I think you could take this in the elementary level, the middle school, the high school, and I think it can make a significant impact on um, how you monitor uh, your students, you know, in those levels. And, and it gives really it gives a supervisor and a teacher, you know, honestly, I would carry. If you see my book bag, they would make fun of me. I would have my big binder in there, my case management stuff, and you know, now it's just. Now it's just a laptop or it's an iPad. Um, I still want to get Sue, who carries around the binders, a laptop. Yeah, but you still carry that laptop. I still. <laughs> it's just not quite as full. Cool, it's not quite as so My back doesn't hurt as much. Um, 
but I still want to get Sue, you know, I was going to put her picture up there like on an iPad or a laptop and just say, Sue, this is all you need now. <laughs> but, you know, our older teachers are going to be the ones that I think we're going to have to work with them and provide them professional development to utilize it. But, um, like I said, our new teacher, she's not here. Literally, she spent an entire morning typing out four teacher summaries that took her probably 10 to 20 minutes to do after using the Google Docs to break it down the way that we showed her. And she's like, oh my god, this is so much easier. And I'm like, you're providing the same information, but you're doing using your time more efficiently. Brett, so uh, let me know if I got this process right. Then. If I'm the case manager, I can send the classroom teacher IEP input survey to each of the teachers who have that student. Yep. They fill that out, and it goes directly into a spreadsheet that you brought up. And then once I have all those responses back in the spreadsheet, I have all the data right there that I can put into the charts and graphs. Yeah, and it'll, it'll actually yeah. create the charts and graphs for you. So as you get, the more teachers you have, obviously that affects your percentages. So if you have four teachers, and three of the four teachers are seeing homework completion as an issue, it's going to come up 75% of the teachers say that the student needs improvement in the area of homework. If you have five, you know, it, that will affect your percentages. But, yeah, really what you do is you'll send your form out. And one of the things that I did find is if you send it from Google, sometimes Google will get caught in your spam filter. So what I've done here is what I'll do is I'll copy my form, and then what I'll do is I'll embed it into an email. If I get a nil, and uh, let's see here, I'll send it to myself, Karen, Linda, and teacher survey, if I can spell it right. And then, you know, I'll cut and paste and say, please click the link above. There's my active hyperlink. And then it'll send it. Once I click on my hyperlink, what it'll do is it'll send me straight to the Google form. And then I fill out my information. So really all the teachers have to do is complete this form. Click the link and complete the form. Show them the drop -down menu? Yeah. So, you know, I can put my team name. We have it by subject. We we've had teachers request more, they want to know more specific, which we'll work on over the summer. So organizational habits, we can say, all right, um, you know, it's acceptable, homework completion needs improvement, effort um, needs improvement, acceptable, we'll say, needs improvement. I don't want to skew my, my own data on my <laughs> That's true. Um, Self-advocacy, this is one that we're really trying to build our seniors towards. Once again, I could say, we'll say it's a strength. Homework in my class, let's say he had an 80%, and then test and quiz grade, 90%. And then these are the behavioral areas as far as for academic teacher. And if they don't complete it, it'll say this is a required mm -hmm. question, which some of our teachers didn't like. <laughs> but if we don't make it required, they'll just submit a form with like right. one or two answers, right. which does not help us. Lack of subordination, needs improvement, lack of disruptiveness. So really what it does is it kind of builds a portfolio of what the student's doing in their academic classes. So, and then from there. And then one of the things that the teachers asked is that we break this up. And the reason why we left it like this was because really teachers would give us very little information. So I'm like, okay, let's just make them write a paragraph on how the kids are doing. They've asked me to break this up into like two or three parts. So it's a little bit easier for them to answer the questions. So that's probably one of the things that we're going to adjust over the summer and change. So um, we'll say Jason is a good student. Nice paragraph. Yep. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I've gotten less. I've gotten the old NA. Yeah. Or this is this is my favorite. This is my favorite. It'll go like this. It'll do. It'll go. Boom. I need to redo. That's it. I'm like really? Are you kidding? No, I've gotten that one. We send it back and say, please do it again. Please do it again. Okay. Uh, retest opportunities. So from there, what happens is, you know, we'll go to the bottom. 
And then one of the big things that we really want from our teachers is to recommend placement. For our academic teachers especially, because we have the co-teaching model, we also have a replacement model in our school. So from here, we're basically saying, okay, can the kid thrive in regular ed? Do they need co-taught or should they be in a learning support? So let's say for Jason, we're going to put him in learning support. I know that I missed the subject, so it's going to say required. then we'll go down. Like I said, if the kid, if if the teachers would log into this form, they would get a copy of it. So that's the change that we'll have to do for next year. But oh, see, it won't let me send it because I have to I have to fill this out correctly. So what it does is it prevents them from submitting something without you know without filling the complete document out. So if I go to Jason's file now and then and then go to responses. You can see that my response is instantly right there. And then, you know, and then there's our charts and graphs that we can provide to the parents and provide to the student. Now, if you make a mistake, say, like you just submitted this and you, you're not really, you don't want that information, like you send it for the wrong person or you were thinking about the wrong kid when you sent it or whatever, can you delete that? Yes, I can delete the response to the teacher. So I would just go down to So would you have to go through the whole process of sending it to them again then? If they did it incorrectly? Yeah, if they like if somebody yeah. said to you, oh gosh, I don't know what I was thinking, that's wrong, and you deleted that one. Yep. Would you have to go again. through the whole thing? To yeah, we would just send it back okay. to them. We okay. could resend it. We could resend that uh, hyperlink and then that would give them the accessibility. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and if I got it right here, well, um, but they would use the same hyperlink. Yeah. They can yeah. use the same yeah. hyperlink. Right. Yes. So you wouldn't have to reset it. No. Well, I could forward it to them again if they lost it, which that's <laughs> happened before. <laughs> so I deleted that response, and then my response got deleted from there. So yeah. now and the you, original five is And you can print a paper version of this out. Yes. You yeah. have a teacher who, yep. you know. If yes. I hit print, let's, <laughs> yes, yeah, if can. I hit um, summary and then up at the top, and it'll give yeah, you, you sorry. And then what you can do is you can actually print it and actually gives you, like I said, the charts and graphs are great. We just wish that we could embed them into our IEPs. We just we can't at this point. You can't copy and paste. No. Our IEP writer only allows. Oh, only because the IEP writer. Yeah, yeah. But you can yeah. program. You can if you were doing like we we don't have a IEP yeah. program. We yeah. do it more. Yeah. So we could. Copy yeah. What you can what you could do here is, and this is yeah. my suggestion, yeah. I would take, there's a cool tool, and I gotta, I gotta let you know that a student showed me this, or one of our IT kids, <laughs> who's really cool and spent the time, but if I wanted to, is use a snipping tool, and then what you do is, you can just save it like that, and then that'll save the picture for you so that you can embed it into your document. So, um, really, without the snipping tool, this presentation wouldn't have been. Please don't use that to put into our IT. No, we, no, we can't, yeah, we can't put right. right. files in and get files in. So, but like I said, um, you know, for us, I think it's made us more efficient and it's provided us um, better use of resources, and I think that's the ultimate goal. I mean, time, money, effort, everything, but you're just getting a better result in the end. And I think for us, as a department, I think it's making us better. So, is there any? Yeah, I saw the teacher comments that it said um, they like to remind it. Does it remind them if they haven't filled out the form, or is that your reminder to them? No, it, if they don't fill it out correctly, it'll remind them. Um, it, but if they don't fill it out at all? I send a reminder. Yeah. So, um, it's, not it, it's like I said, in the past six months, seven months, I've actually seen them update and add some features that are very useful. Um, it'd be great to be able to go into it and say on such and such date and time to send this out. So that way I wouldn't, you know, I could sit down and look right. at one of my IEPs are due and then actually, you know, basically create a schedule for that and have it, you know, sent out. Mm -hmm. I know that um, I wouldn't surprise me if they had that availability, but honestly, they could go in there and create a hyperlink and then send it out. And really, you could actually send that out from um, Outlook. And Outlook could also do that for right. you as a reminder. So our, our behavioral forms, now our IU does our behavioral forms. They actually have a weekly reminder of when they're due. Mm -hmm. So that's probably what they're referring to. Um, 
So, but they also use Google Forms for, for the behavioral component of it. So you can, you can use it for, for collecting behavioral data. You can use it for just an assortment of anything. The nice part about it is it's, it's free, it's, it's, it's useful, and, and honestly, like I said, for us, um, it's been a really great tool and asset for the last, you know, for this past year, and I'm hoping that we can build upon that next year. Well, there wouldn't be any reason for a part-time both tech school like you could send it out to you. I guess I'm thinking, <coughs> you know, so I have a kid, and they come to my district, they're in your Votex school, we could share that same form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that also becomes a real issue, and I often hear back, well, we can't get anything from XYZ. Yeah. I think that would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that way, you know, you could share that. And like I said, across, you know, really it's just giving them, you know, if I wanted to go in and, and I wanted to give somebody the ability to, If I wanted to share, okay. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to share a folder or share a document, all I would have to do is click um, the share part, and then all I needed is an email, and I can share that, and that would give that teacher the accessibility, mm -hmm. and I can set it to edit, view, or comment. So you know you have the ability of doing that. So. To get this wrapped up, because I know everyone wants to move on to the next session. If we can give everyone a round of applause here. Thank you, Brett.